now I'd like to hand over uh, Mr. Isad uh, Mpani to lead the session uh, under the theme of session uh, 6. Uh, but at the meantime, I'd like to thank distinguished panelists uh, for cooperating with us, uh, understanding the circumstances. Uh, you lead uh, last sessions and then we'll jointly uh, wrap up the sessions. So I'd like to hand over to Mr. Bisal Mpani. Minister of Industry, Corporate Nepal. Now we have a very special ceremony. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Honorable Navindra Rath Joshi for his uh, presence in this uh, Nepal, uh, Nepal Foreign Policy Conference on behalf of Government of Nepal. Now we would like to provide a small token of love on behalf of uh, organizers and co-organizers. I'd like to call Mr. Cyril Casey, CEO of AIDIA to hand over the token of law to Honorable uh, Guest, Honorable Davindra Raj Joshi, Ministry of Industry, Government of Nepal. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency, Honorable Davindra Raj Joshi, for your grace. Uh, raising and closing uh, remarks, special address in this conference. Uh, we are delighted by your presence and your presentation and your remarks has made this uh, conference successful and it has legitimized that government of Nepal also has some of the uh, vital interests in this conference. Now I'd like to uh, move on to our session and we are at the last of our event. Uh, uh, we will have just 15 or 20 minutes and we'll end up this session. I would like to uh, apologize for being late and without any delay, I'd like to introduce two speakers we have and previous to that, what is the topic I'd like to introduce. Uh, basically, uh, the theme of our session is Nepal's Foreign Relations, BCRBR, Labor, uh, labor Distribution countries and agendas we have recognized is uh, from Foreign Employment Policy 2012, ensuring welfare and security of Nepali migrants, more than quarter of contribution of remittance to Nepal's GDP, utilizing the remittance in national development. It means that this session is covering two aspects on the basis of labor, uh, means uh, Nepal's foreign policy with foreign relation with labor destination countries, we are going to discuss on two basic issues. That the first is that, uh, what, is the, what is the concern about the security and welfare of migrant workers? <coughs> and second is that, uh, since uh, we are sharing the high human resources uh, to the labor destination countries, uh, to all the, uh, those nations where our Nepali citizens are going there, they are employed, uh, and we all are acknowledged that our, uh, moreover, the economy of our country uh, is uh, adopted or, what to say, accumulated by the remittance. So, we have two issues. Number one is welfare and security of migrants. And second is how remittance can be used for national development. So, first of all, I'd like to call, first of all, I'd like to introduce two speakers, Bhimke uh, Udas and uh, Mr. Paul Aynoton. First of all, I'd like to call Mr. Paul Aynoton. He is Chief of Mission, International Organization of Migration, and I would like to, uh, we would like to hear something like international experience of welfare and protection of migrants. On the perspective of international organizations, what the role has been played by international organization to safeguard uh, the rights uh, or uh, what to say, uh, welfare and protection of migrants. Thank you. Honorable Chair, uh, distinguished panelists, media, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of IOM Nepal, I would like to thank the conference organizers for the invitation to participate in this important gathering of experts and officials. I will appreciate the initiative to have such an important discussion and discourse on migration and foreign relations, which inherently relate to employment policies and practices in sending and receiving countries. I would like to reflect on a few key points in the context of labor migration, for foreign employment, and some opportunities as a way forward. 
Foreign employment is recognized as the most significant motivation for international migration from Nepal in the 21st century. More than 3.8 million permits to work abroad, excluding India, were issued by the government in the last 20 years. This represents almost 14% of the population of Nepal. It's extraordinary. According to the census data of 2011, nearly 71% of the total out of the country population cited private and institutional jobs abroad as the reasons for leaving. It is well known that there has been a tenfold increase in the inflow of remittances from 59 billion rupees to 590 billion rupees in the last 10 years. Again, it's extraordinary growth. Remittance flows, which contribute around 30% to the annual GDP, can conceivably be a major contributor to development financing in Nepal, if managed properly. The nature of labor migration for employment has brought both new opportunities and challenges for the government and policymakers. A primary concern has been in managing the steady outflow of people while ensuring the safety, rights, decency, and welfare of migrants and migrants as workers abroad. This has required strengthening the governance process, creating cohesive legislation and policies, and ensuring their proper implementation. But it also involves strengthening the capabilities of diplomatic representatives and consuls abroad to be able to address and manage these efforts in often complex diplomatic, humanitarian, and private sector triangles of concern and consideration. Despite the legislation and policies and an increase in migrant workers opting to go abroad via regular channels, there are still gaps in the implementation of such legislation and policies. These gaps have profound impacts on the rights and safety of migrants, and the cases of labor migrants suffering from abuses, exploitation, and financial distress are frequent and impinge on their rights and well-being. In this context, it is important to note that Nepal has ratified several pertinent, relevant international human rights instruments, particularly the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, both 1966. Consequently, the Foreign Employment Policy 2012 of the Government of Nepal is a major landmark in providing a framework for ensuring the rights of migrant workers. In support of these efforts, SIOM has been working closely with the Ministry of Labor and other government agencies in developing and reviewing policies and strategic plans related to foreign employment and labor migration. But these are local efforts, and we need to also look at regional and international efforts, dialogues, and opportunities for improved foreign relations, and enhanced opportunity for Nepal and its people abroad. A comprehensive and multi-pronged approach is needed to deal with the issues, the challenges, and the gaps related to migration and foreign employment and to harness the emergency, emerging opportunities at all levels. I'm therefore pleased to note that the government of Nepal this week took over the chairmanship of the Colombo Process Regional Dialogue on Labor Migration, which will offer a unique opportunity to enhance coordination, cooperation, and collaboration among member states to address a wide range of important issues around labor migration and foreign employment. At the, at the national level and in the region. IOM, together with other partners, will provide support to the Ministry of Labor and Employment and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in coordinating and facilitating the implementation of activities related to the Colombo process. The government of Nepal is also discussing plans to convene national multi-stakeholder consultations on the Global Compact on Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration which will be instrumental in addressing wider issues of broader migration management. This is an international effort that came out of the New York Declaration on Refugees and Migration 
and was adopted by heads of state on 19 September 2016, which also uh, was the time when IOM joined the United Nations as the UN's migration agency. The Global Compact on Migration is intended to present a framework for comprehensive international cooperation on migrants and human mobility and addresses all aspects of international migration. This is really a great opportunity for Nepal to lend its experience and voice to the international dialogue on migration and to address foreign relations as part of the dialogue on migration. The government of Nepal has made great strides on the 2030 agenda on SDGs and has volunteered to be among the first countries to report on progress. Migrant-sensitive national policies and strategies contribute to the implementation of the SDGs in several key aspects, and the government is to be congratulated for its early efforts. More importantly, by being at the forefront of reporting on progress, Nepal has the opportunity to use this in its foreign policy dialogue with destination countries. Beyond the foreign policy needs, though, there are gaps in knowledge and information that can be enhanced by a culture of evidence-informed policy, planning, and programming. This should be through policy reviews and research studies related to labor migration for foreign employment, productive use of remittances, livelihood and employment planning, skills matching, and information accessibility to enable the widest number of people in Nepal to make informed choices on what is best for themselves their families, their communities, and the nation. To that end, the effective implementation of the Foreign Employment Policy 2012 and sectoral strategic plans are important tools for the government of Nepal and its partners to apply here and abroad. There is, too, the opportunity to facilitate the implementation of the SARC Plan of Action for Cooperation on Matters Relating to Migrant Workers. IOM and ILO have been working jointly to provide technical support uh, to move this effort forward in collaboration with the government of Nepal. As well, bilateral labor agreements can be vital tools in governing the labor migration processes between origin and destination countries to protect the rights and welfare of migrant workers. And there is a growing need to enter into bilateral labor agreements with destination countries that can provide more protection to Nepali migrant workers. In the end, Nepal, like all other labor-sending countries, must balance its national and foreign policy considerations together with those of its developmental needs at home and the safety and dignity of its citizens abroad. Nepal has many friends and partners, as well as tools and opportunities to do so. And we look forward to the ultimate success Nepal can make in these important areas. Thank you. Mr. Paul, I note on. Now we have the last speaker of this session, the last speaker of our country. And I think it will be important to us also. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Bhim Kevadas. He has been working in the UN system, different uh, UN organizations like WFO for 30 years. It means you have uh, relevant experience on working on international organization. Like he's also involved on two development projects and similarly he's also chairman of FIPMO, Forum of Former International Professional of Multilateral Organizing in Nepal. And he's also ambassador designated to Myanmar and former honorary council of Jordan. Now uh, we would like to hear something like uh, the relief, uh, what to say, we have an uh, agenda relating to remittance. So we expect that, uh, means we want to hear something like remittance in national development. Means how we can utilize remittance in national development since uh, this is also one of the core uh, issue or core in, uh, issue of our national interest. So I'd like to call Bimodas, sir. Thank you. you heard I'm the last speaker of today's long session. Can you imagine? Wow. You must be tired, you must be sleepy. Are you? Yes. No, not me. If yes, I would like to request you to stand up 
and have three long breaks. If you are tired. If you are not, I will start. Is that sure? Well, I'm going to approve the picture, I don't know. You, foreign policy, relation especially with our neighbors, Ma Rashtri Swartha, Rashtri Heer, Samritika Dheri Kurahar Mahajabhai. Foreign policy ko, yesari yoda wider consultation process ma yoh bhai ko pahilo patak wala. Kei barsha gaadi, Constitution Assembly ma, the International Relations Committee cha. Teo committee le foreign policy of your change environment ma. Kastu unu parsha ne yota meeting gare. Subhavi ko, kine wane hami monarchy baada federal republic ma aise ke pachi. Hamro prarthi mita aru, hamro niti aru ma ke बदल बदलाव करना आप शिक्षा की चाहिए ना उसे तो डिस्कोर्स होना जरूरी है रतिस बेला मलय एनआरएन को रिप्रेजेंटेटिव को रूप में त्याग पड़ा ही पड़ती है ना मलय लाये पड़ती हो ये तो डिस्कोर्स ये तो मीटिंग ये ब्रोडर वाइड कंसल्टेशन में पब्लिक में अगर अगर ना पाया अच्छा नाम लो तो बोला तो मेरे मधुरमन जिले मनेश तय गुराई आज हमले पर राष्ट्र नीति तीन बारी लगाया था सरकार करी हूँ राष्ट्रीय स्वार्थ का पूरा दूसरा दूँ शायद पांच से पड़ा maybe we have for five hundred time about foreign policy our national interest राष्ट्रीय ही समृद्धि I think before we leave this room we must try to understand what we discuss today. Mere Picharma, Rashtri, Rashtri Swartha Paneko, now national interest means survival, sovereignty, and security of Nepal. When we talk security, it is both border security and international security. Hamro Rashtri Swat, Hamro Rashtri Hee Kema Chama. The utilization of our national resources and human resources. This is what we discuss. And our national interest lies on the preservation of our national heritage and protection of our ancient and archaeological sites. Do you agree with that? Your Kothama Jan, Paira Jan, Bandagari, at least we discussed today on those three main points. Our other major subject or topic, remittings, which relates to this to some reading. You all know. Nepal has 57% of the young age group, which means from 15 to 16 years age group. This is why we are here in Nepal. But of half a million people, every year, they go out. तर फायदा क्या बने देश से बिटवीन फाइव टू सिक्स बिलियन रुपीस एक रेमिटेंस चुके पार एंड दैट इस बिग अमाउंट बिकॉज़ दैट इस अलमोस्ट एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ़ आवर एन्युअल नेशनल बजट एंड डू यू नो हाउ मेनी फैमिलीज आर बीइंग बेनिफिटेड फ्रॉम द रेमिटेंस about 56% of our total population, they are benefiting from remittance somehow. 
we are very happy that so large amount of money is coming to Nepal. But we should have to know that almost 60 to 70 percent of that remittance is going back to India and China because we import pearls from there. The Nepal Makib agriculture. I think we have to think how to use these huge resources in productive activity. More in our my work on our I mean, so that you buy of me, so for a few girls, you know, Nepal, I mean, for some photos, so for some good life, matter of it. Yeah, why you go down to good life, matter of it. Jamming kinder of our phenomenal good life, matter of it. Tara, this quality productive activity, but it was. So they am let you stop it after buy of us. This is a little Nepal Sarkar Sana Milera, in our investment fund. So that create the established girl. Taki Josuke de Pali, do you say Dora Kamoni de Kilera? My name is Dosa Dora Kamoni de Kilipari early. Afli Afli Chaiko, Rotom, Paisa, took one mother mother. Jun Jamba or Paisa, Amile, you're a committee, board, Gatan Garera, you're a productive project at Mas, Lagani Gansa. But somehow that thing flat. You know, I think there's a lack of trust. I mean, the Ekar can be swast or something. Mere Mile Pasai Pahai Kupesha or the Kaidilaki, or Kosaki, or the Mostikar Sadi, Satyoda or Leola. This is a Sarkarde, the Rashta Bank Liberty Source of Peru. The Kosari Tay, Body Vanda Body Sources, the Remittance Vanda Ayasa, this is like productive. Well, when we talk about foreign empowerment, it's not only, it has to manifest, it's not only about remedies. It has to do with the management, it's all said it has to do with the security, the safety in the, in the, in the workplace. It has something to do with their livelihood, how they live. It has to do with, their, with the management. There are so many things, remittance is just one part of that. When we talk about labor, foreign environment, there are many statutes and conventions, ILO conventions, and all the countries in the world, they are the members of ILO, and all of them have signed the convention. But when it comes to labor, market, foreign employment, those destination countries where our laborers go, our people go, they even do not want to sign a MOU. They do not want to recognize that there must be the labor, the work must be respected, recognized, or they should labor should have some kind of dignity. That understanding must be found. We must work on it. Because labor is not a commodity. It's not a piece of apple or a TV set that can be negotiated for the highest price or the lowest uh, highest profit or the lowest price. Work is everybody's daily life and is crucial to a person's dignity, well-being, and development as a human being. As I said, it should be respected. And we can't imagine how the destination countries, they could use foreign employees, but do but do not pay much attention to sign the movie for so I think this is something our mission, our image, our government should try to enforce, should try to request the destination country. At the same time, 
since the, you know Nepalese are being more and more educated, skilled, semi-skilled, we also need to look for new destinations where educated, skilled, or semi-skilled Nepalese could go and earn more money. <coughs> the second question is people are coming back, returning, you know, when their contract is completed, they are returning. And we need to think how to use their skill and expertise when they come back for our research building. At the moment, not much is being done in that respect. But we know what China has done a couple of years ago when there was a global economic crisis. When their factories were being closed or working hard. What they did, what they did was they, they found a new place and brought laborers who were not used by the factory and asked them to work to produce vegetables and all agriculture products so that they could be engaged while the factories are not working full time. There are many, we can find many examples like that. So my, my main trust is we must try to find product, productive projects, activity that could, that could be helpful for the prosperity of Nepal. I will close my statement with one quote by UN Secretary General, <coughs> past Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Experience shows that economic growth is not sufficient. We must do more to empower individuals through decent work, support people through social protection, and ensure the voices of the poor and marginalized are heard. Let us make social justice central to achieving equitable <coughs> and sustainable growth for all. Thank you very much. We put us, sir. Now we are at the end of our conference. Uh, before departing from this hall to cocktail dinner, we have some task remain. First, we'd like to provide token of love to our distinguished guests. And second, we have a few words from organizer and organizer. So I think we have to wait for five or ten minutes. Okay, now without any delay, I'd like to call Vice Chancellor of U.S. University, Dr. Rupendra Poirela, to hand over the token of love. I'd like to call Sir Indais, Professor Modukar S. V. Rana, who was panelist of session five, Professor Madhukar S. V. Rana, former finance minister. Please clap. <laughs> Similarly, Mr. Rajeshwar Acharya, former, former MS student science. Dr. Omesh Patrai. Similarly, uh, we have a panelist of session six, Mr. Paul I. Norton. Similarly, we have Mr. Bhim Odas, panelist of session six. And at last, we have guests from India. He is professor of OBG the Global University. And would like to provide a special token of love from Nepal. Dr. Pankaj Na. Dr. Pankaj Na, who belongs to OBG the Global University. And we are thankful to his presence in this conference. Now we are
done with providing token of love to our distinguished panelists. And I'd like to thank and also I'd like to apologize uh, for understanding and cooperating on behalf of both organizer and coordinator. And now we have some uh, concluding, concluding speech or what is it? Thank you speech from coordinator. I would like to call Associate Professor Mr. Ganesh Karki, Director of International Relations, uh, Directorate, MWU, Midwest University. Associate Professor Mr. Ganesh Karki. Thank you, Associate <laughs> Professor Mr. Ganesh Karki. Uh, we also represent our co organizer. Now, without any delay, I'd like to call Mr. Sunil Kesi, CEO of this organizing organization, Asian Institute of Diplomacy and International Affairs. Good evening. Uh, let me thank you, first of all, you participants, uh, for your long patience to make the conference successful. The credit goes to all of you. I thank you, and I must thank you to the speakers who are joining with us from uh, various agencies uh, to make this conference uh, most successful. And I would say this conference uh, would help in coming days to get new ideas, not only to make the foreign policy, even to make your, you know, uh, like for other informations. So without any delay, you know, uh, like we have, uh, you know, we completed six sessions in one day. And, you know, we had, uh, you know, lots of draws. But we managed uh, very properly because, uh, if I tell you very frankly, our team idea is a very small team. And we are very, you know, like uh, six, uh, six young people under the age of 30. And we are running this organization from the Midwest University and my colleague uh, Mr. Shyam Kesi, the research director of AIDI, uh, Ms. Kamana Murgat, the operating director of AIDI, then Shishma Rai, uh, who hosted uh, the conference today as a MC, uh, then Vishal Nipane, uh, who is a public relations officer of AIDI, then Shaka Narayal, uh, Sharika, then, and then other friends, uh, then the interns uh, coming us uh, from the Nepal College. I hope you also enjoyed and you have some you know, beautiful information regarding the conference. Uh, and uh, let's thank to the uh, distinguished panelists uh, joining, with us, uh, joining with us here and uh, given us very concrete information uh, what you have gained uh, you know, uh, in your uh, tenure as a diplomat or as a professor or whatever, whatever the position you have been incurring. Uh, in the end, uh, I would like to you know, uh, request all of you to join the cocktail dinner, uh, then have a networking session, and don't forget, don't forget AIDI. We'll be coming very soon with other programs, and let us stay in touch on our website and Facebook page and Twitter, so that we'll be also using the digital diplomacy, so that we'll be connected. Because connection is more important than money. So we believe connectivity comes first. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants. Uh, just one minute. We have last program that is uh, Midwestern University, which is the co-organizer of this event, would like to present a token of law to Asian Institute of Diplomacy and National Affairs. So I like to call uh, Dr. Upendra Koirala, who is Vice Chancellor of Midwestern University on the dais. Similarly, Sunil Kesi, CEO of Asian Institute of Diplomacy and National Affairs, AITIA. Uh, Professor Koirala, Midwestern University is simply the trademark. The whole credit, the insurmountable tax is performed by AIDIA and I would like to congratulate Sunil Kesi, Shyam Kesi, Nyopane and all the family of AIDIA. I'm not getting any words to express gratitude to this young personality to honor them, give them a big hand first of all. Okay, with all this regard, uh, this is uh, on, be, on behalf of my university, uh, this token of love we are going to hand over to the family of the IDIA. Thank you, Dr. Koyala. 
Sorry, I forgot to, to mention the name uh, Mr. Basudev Kanal, who is the program director of EIDI, who has been working you know, very uh, hard you know, since a month. So, uh, thank you. Okay, now we are on to the program. We are going to cocktail dinner. Please enjoy cocktail dinner. Gala dinner, not cocktail dinner. Thank you. Okay, let's have, let's...